Hey YouTube, this is a 2021 16 inch MacBook Pro, board number A2002100. And this board had a pretty bad liquid damage. As you can see, I had to clear out the short. I already covered it with the UV mask, but this is the short that goes all the way through the motherboard. It's pretty bad, so I had to put this capacitor back is one of the main ones so as you can see the board goes all the way through but it works so I tested after I cleared the short I tested it out and after that I had to go through all this side of the board to add and replace the messed up elements on this board I it replaced at least 10 resistors that were bad. Some of the stuff, this cap was replaced as well. So it turned on from the battery, but uh, it would not charge from the USB-C port. It started charging from the MagSafe for a little bit. And then second time it would not charge, it would just blink the orange light. So it was working from the battery, but it wasn't working, but it wasn't charging. So, and uh, these two USB-C ports on this side were not working, on the other side one was working. So, I and after I redid, you know, there's a bunch of, you know, replaced here and here. Reflowed the uh, CD32 17th. Oh, actually, so, oh, these are 18th. C30, CD32 18th. So, these are 18th. Ah. So these are 17, 32, 17, 32, 17 for the USB-C ports. And for the MagSafe, it's actually CD3218. Let me turn it around. Oh, so this is different for the MagSafe. CD3218 B12. But uh, I cleaned it up a little bit and just want to test it out, make sure, you know, we get, at least we get, you know, I want to, I want to have a charging cap uh, capability for the MagSafe, so so it's gonna be halfway working. All right. As you can see, the computer is working, but it's still not charging. So that's that, and just want to show you that this is this board with the little hole right there. Okay, and uh, the charger, the MagSafe is still blinking orange. And I did some measurements. I'm not getting anything uh, on the main pin and uh, and on the so through basically two 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 main pins. One pin is it should be uh, should be. Um, pushing out like 28 volts and another pin I think sh it should be 5 volts there but it's a you know on the 28 volt line is 0 and uh, on the 5 volt line is uh, 0 0.72 volts so it's probably something has you know something to do with the CD3218 because uh, you know it was working at some point so maybe I have to pull that out and uh, clean it out the chip because I don't even have the CD3218s so I'm gonna take that out and clean it out and see if it's gonna help because it's probably some some gunk under it. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, so we're gonna pull the CD3218 because there's lots of corrosion was around that chip. As you can see on this, you know, I had to replace some resistors, there's capacitors not really good looking so I'm gonna pull this because most likely it has some gunk underneath underneath so
does have a little bit of gunk. But not bad. Let's press out. Okay, so let's clean it up. I'm gonna separate this right here. There's the bridge, so I don't really want to reboil it, and I'm not exactly sure if I even have the stencil. I don't think the stencil for CD4217 will fit, so let's just do it this way. I just separated that block a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna clean it up and go from there. Yeah, so it wasn't bad at all. I mean, from underneath it did not look like it's bad short form. So this way I'm gonna be skipping the reball all together. You know what? Let me make some measurements before I put it back on. As I mentioned another stuff there. There is some kind of a short in the main uh B bus line so but it's not related to CD3218, so let me just put this one back. Put it in spot, get a little a little heat so it kind of stays in place. It's not easy, but it works. Okay, so we can remove it 
users. And continue. Beautiful. Just gonna look. Yep. Everything looks very solid. Okay, so let me see a little more, do a little more research and see what's going on. Okay, a quick update. I actually uh, checked and measured a partial short on the uh, PPV bus line. And after injecting uh, one volt here into that line, the diode is actually as you can see the diode is kind of getting hot it's just a one one volt okay so we're gonna replace that diode and maybe that's gonna actually fix our blinking issue so it's gonna charge again all right so this is the diode in question and this is the uh, shot key diode PMEG6020ER so I did not find the same diode anywhere on any other boards thanks to the search function of FlexBV from Paul Daniels but I found a similar diode on a 16 inch previous generation 2019 board which is right here and this diode is uh, PMEG6010ER so the only difference is the not the only one but the, probably the main one is forward current according to the Mauser uh, forward current is 1 amp versus 2 amps on the 2021 model so I mean uh, We'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm gonna just replace it and see, you know, if it's gonna if it's gonna do. I might I might order uh, the proper diode, the one that should be here from Mauser. But for now, I just want to test it out and see, because this is you know it's pretty similar. So let's see if it's gonna actually work. Okay, so let me remove this and that. And after I remove this, I'm actually gonna. I'm actually going to test if we have the short still there. I mean, it did. It, it actually. Uh, I tested the diode, the diode mode, and it actually was shot. So I was pretty sure that diode is gone. But I just wanna try to remove it and double check. Test real quick, make sure we don't have any shorts anymore. Yeah. And yes, we don't have any shorts. That's good. So this diode was shot. Make sure I did not miss anything else.
it up with my tweezers now. for it. Is the big, big tip. Okay. That will do. Okay. So let me clean it up and see how it goes. Oh, actually, I'm gonna test for the short ones again. Yes, we are golden on this side, so let's see how it goes. After replacing the diode, it did actually charge for a little bit, but it went out again in about, uh, I would say, charged for maybe 20 seconds, maybe a minute. Anyway, I didn't really pay attention, but it stopped charging after that. And I mentioned that the side of the board was actually getting pretty hot and the diode got blown. This diode got blown again. So there is something else underlying problem there. So I'm gonna go and see if I can find what's going on probably. Also, uh, uh, when I measured with my uh, 96 watt uh, adapter, with the MagSafe plug, USB-C to MagSafe, so uh, I'm not gonna touch it and then I disconnect the battery yet. So on a diode, it was shown 20 volts and on this resistor right here, that's another paint pin for the MagSafe was shown 1.6 volts. So just uh, for the reference, it was, uh, I was not exactly sure what should be there, but 1.6 there and 20 volt on the diode. So I'm gonna pr probably try to inject 20 volt here. I'm gonna remove this diode uh, maybe less i'm gonna make sure you know ch check it out where it's getting hot maybe maybe it's somewhere i did not clear out the short uh, all the way because uh, was short was not on this line there so there's some some somewhere else maybe there is another i need i am not exactly sure what exactly is uh is getting hot there so i'll have to do a little a research i need to check this too but uh, let me check and see what, what, what I can come up with I decided to pull CD7 uh, CD3217 just to make sure there is no gunk under that chip I didn't see anything but then it looks pretty clean but as you can see take a look at the back of the chip do you see this kind of a burn mark right there Like right here, you know, in this area, it's pretty bad. So that's maybe that's why you know the whole thing was heating up and uh, it was blowing the diode. I don't know, but you know it definitely needs to be replaced. I and mean, we'll go 
one thing at a time and I already pulled the one from the donor board and it is like you can see there's nothing like that on the back of the donor board chip okay so so this one's probably I'm gonna I'm gonna reball because uh, it does make sense to reball I have a stencil for this one so I'm gonna replace it and get back to it So replacement chip rebolt. The spot is cleaned. And let's go ahead and install this. Make sure we are properly oriented. I usually orient this by the by the uh, corner pins so these two corner pins and on this side there are no corner pins so this one two and that's it and so pin one is going to be right there okay so that's the easiest way for me to see uh, the orientation without going into the schematics so I'm going to do exactly the same way as the previous one just going to kind of align it the best I can CD4217B12, that's the old, that's the old one, that's the new one. So let's see if it's gonna help us. I'm gonna, I have to search another short key diode. Okay, so, couple things. Well, I was messing around with CD4217 on this model. So I took one, uh, out of uh, 2019 16 inch uh, out of this board okay CD3217 it didn't work that CD like that port didn't work at all no charging no nothing I had this I saw a light on a max save but it was not charging so then I, I knew I mean I kind of knew that sometimes there are some uh, compatibility issues with CD3217 and that CD, uh, that uh, that chip actually did not look exactly the same as the one on this model. So uh, the font was a little different, but I had the donor board M1, MacBook Pro M1 2020. And this is the proper right, you know, same, you know, about the same writing as was on this one. So I tried this, a CD3217. It didn't work either. So it appears that this model actually need a CD3217 from exact same donor board. That's 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 really bad news. So what I ended up doing actually, I cleaned up the original chip, the one that had kind of a. I I, I took a closer look at it. It wasn't really a burned mark. You know, it was kind of a. When these chips like kind of get water under under underneath, you know, uh, there's so so it, I didn't see any like uh, you know I didn't see it was burned, you know like kind of physically burned. So I cleaned it up a little bit. I rebolted it. I put it in, and now we have charging, but we do have charging on the USB on the USB C port. Okay, USB C port is charging very well. No issues. I'm not sure if you can see it here 
but it is charging at 77 percent already so i'm gonna show you real quick on my power meter so it is charging you know i, I took a look uh with my uh thermal camera everything's fine as you can see Twenty volts, one point eight goes all the way up to like four point four point something amps, so it's drawing good amperage. It's charging pretty good, no issues here. Okay, like see it's already at three three seventy nine, three ninety four, three ninety six. So it's charging fine with USB C ports. These ports are still, these two ports on this side, I still uh, cannot detect the. Uh, any data you know i'm trying to man i messed it up my charging thing anyway so but with the actual and i tried the uh, magsafe cord and what's happening is like it's it's really i mean it works and it charges but it's uh you know the actual magsafe either it's a either magsafe or it's the or uh or the or the magsafe board is getting really hot so uh, I did not push it because it was going all the way like up to two f 200 Celsius there. Uh, and that's not a really good sign. So at this point, I'm going to call it a kind of semi-fix. I mean, it's semi-fix anyway, because these two ports, they're not going to work. And I don't think they're going to work. They ever going to work because it was such a bad burn there. And I had to clear, clear out the short and everything. So that's that so i don't think this port is gonna work anyway and uh i'm gonna skip the max safe uh and uh, it's probably gonna be charging for the, from these usb c ports here on the side so that's the deal and uh in that case it's a uh, you know other, other than not working two usb ports and uh unable to charge from the uh max safe charger but it can be charged for usb c so uh that's and it's gonna be other than that, everything else seems to be fine and everything else seems to be working just fine. So that's the deal for this. Uh, once again, I'm gonna plug it in. See, it's charging. So that's uh, that's the deal with this laptop. I think I'm gonna leave it at that because uh, I don't think, as I said, you know, the burn is pretty bad. The hole is there, you know, lots of uh, traces are missing and I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go that deep because it's uh it's 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 pretty pretty usable i mean i'm not sure you know if you can see this on the on the screen there are streaks all over the screen you know liquid you see that especially bad on this side right there but anyway so this computer you know a couple things to mention cd forty two seventeenth has to be taken i mean from what i can see i'm not sure i did not uh, i did not try to pull all three out because uh, uh they don't want to really you know make it worse but uh most likely the cd 3217 from this model has to be taken out from the same donor board and uh, the max safe uh is a is a completely different chip from the max safe cd 3218 and uh and even with this kind of damage, as you can see, this kind of hole in the board, it still can get uh, booted and it can, you know, can, can be used. So this uh, laptop, we'll see another day. So thank you very much for watching. And uh, uh, let me show you real quick what I'm talking about. So I just want to show you one, one thing about the thermal cam, actually, how it's showing up. So let me connect and come on. I'm going to show you real quick about the thermal camera because it's kind of interesting. Okay, so. As you can see, 
nothing much charging right now. But it's pretty, you know, it's pretty decent. Like nothing's really getting hot. So that's that. But now I'm gonna unplug this and plug in the uh, the MagSafe. The MagSafe cord. And you can gonna see the difference. Oops, it's, it's even disconnected. Let me connect this one back. Okay, so take a look. I'm connecting the MagSafe. And you see how it's like, oh, it's not not Celsius. I'm sorry, it's Fahrenheit. But still, it's getting really hot in that area. As you can see, it's growing. It's already 165, 167. So it's getting really, really hot in that area and it's rising. So I don't want to really push it. As you can see, it might be, it actually might be the actual USB, uh, the MagSafe board, but I'm not 100% sure. Let me disconnect it. Is it doing anything when I just connect the power supply? Yeah, because it's not getting any power at all. But anyway. So that's the deal, and let me show you that it is charging now. Through the max safe. As you can see. You yeah, see? It's charging, but it's getting it's getting really really hot in that area. I, I don't think this is normal. It's getting, it's getting, you know, hard to touch. So, but it can be charged with USB-C. So that's, that's the deal at this point. And uh, I'm gonna finish this video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you learned something from this video. Maybe it's gonna help you in diagnosing or anything, but you, you know, CD 32 17th, good information right here so thank you very much for watching have a live day guys if you like my videos please subscribe and uh bye bye see you later in my next video bye guys